Introducing a stallion as top class as they come. In 22 career starts, he won or placed in 12 graded stakes, competing in 15 grade ones, earning over $1.7 million. His undisputed speed is evidenced by seven 100 plus fire speed figures, a three time grade one winner, Raging. Hi everyone, welcome to the Time Form US Road to the Derby series presented by Gainsway. Gainsway is sponsoring all of our Derby coverage this week, and there are three Kentucky Derby preps taking place across the country. One at Aqueduct, the Withers, the Holy Bull at Gulfstream Park, and on Sunday at Santa Anita, it is the grade three Robert B. Lewis, and that is the focus of this video. Five three-year-olds signed on to go a mile and a 16th at Santa Anita on Sunday, and here is the field for the race. Got two Bob Baffert trained runners in this field, the number one Messier, and the number four Wharton. And if you've been following the news heading to this 2022 Kentucky Derby, you know that both of those horses are not eligible to collect Kentucky Derby qualifying points. Bob Baffert trainees are not able to accrue points heading towards the Kentucky Derby. They will have to uh, change barns at some point in the future if they're going to make it into that race. So we'll see if they finish first, second, third, or fourth here, and if others have to collect points from this race. But those will not be redistributed if Messier and Wharton do finish in the top four. Some others to consider Sir London and Happy Jack coming off maiden victories. Wharton, I should also point out, coming off a maiden win in his debut. Messier, the horse drawn down towards the rail, I figure will be the morning line favorite. I have not seen the morning line at the time of recording this video on Friday afternoon, but Messier does seem to be coming into this race with the strongest credentials. Let's take a look at the Time Form US pace projector for this race. In a small field like this, we're not predicting a pace that's going to be fast or slow. Though There are some horses who want to be forwardly placed in this spot, including those two recent maiden winners, the number four Wharton and the number two Sir London. Both of those runners won their maiden victories close to the pace. The number five Happy Jack also stretching out from a maiden win, going six furlongs out to this mile and the 16th distance. He's one that came from middle, a little bit off the pace though, so you'd imagine they'll take him back in this spot, breaking from the outside post. And that number one Messier, the more fancied of the two Bob Baffert runners, he has shown the ability to come from off the pace in his prior starts, and he's taking the blink off in this race, so you would imagine they would rein him in to rate uh, in this stretch out in distance. So let's take a look at that number one, Messier, the horse that I do figure will be the favorite in this race, and check out his last race, the grade two Los Alamitos Futurity, when he lost as the one to two favorite, finishing second to Slow Down Andy, and that is the eventual winner, Slow Down, Slow Down Andy, ranging up on the outside, and you see that chest, that horse with his head turned to the right, he's racing very greenly, whereas Messier down on the rail, is racing straight. He's just kind of getting a little tired at the end of this race. And even though Slow Down Andy is kind of looking for uh, an opportunity to slow down, to put note for lack of a better word, coming to the final 16th of a mile, he runs by Messier. That horse really has no answer as he's trying to battle back on the inside. A bit of a disappointing effort considering that he was such a short price in that race. Uh, he did get back to his top time from the speed figure running a 110, the same number that he had run when he broke his maiden so impressively back in October of last year. After that, Messier was a visually impressive winner of the Bob Hope going seven furlongs at Del Mar back in November. And it should be noted, the runner-up in that race, Forbidden Kingdom, came back out of that second-place finish to run a very good, uh, I think, 117-time Form U.S. speed figure when he won the San Vicente last weekend in his very next start. So the form of that Bob Hope was flattered by that horse. And Messier, he basically did run the same kind of race last time in the Los Al Futurity. Just a little bit disappointing that he wasn't able to get the job done in that spot. And that was his first time stretching out to the mile and the 16th distance around two turns, the same configuration that he's going to face on Saturday at Santa Anita. So even though he's bred to run all day, being by Empire Maker out of a smart strike mare, you do wonder if maybe he's a horse that was a little more precocious and wanted to go shorter. Also, Bob Baffert is taking off the blinkers in this race. And I have a DRF formulator fact for Bob Baffert that I want to check out. I'm a little bothered by this blinker switch which they went on for the last race after being on early in his career. Now they're coming off once again. And Bob Baffert taking the blinkers off in graded stakes and dirt routes over the past five years. He's just two for 16, 13% with a very low ROI. These are horses that typically go off at short prices. And Bob Baffert's not really winning with them when he starts tinkering with the blinkers like this. So that's a bit of a negative for me on Messi, a horse that I do think is going to be a fairly short price in this spot 
though Bob Baffert does have one other contender in this five-horse field, and that is the number four, Wharton. Let's take a look at his maiden victory on New Year's Eve, December 31st. This was going six and a half furlongs, and I thought this horse ran pretty well. Uh, he was involved in an honest early pace, stalking before taking over on the inside, coming to the quarter pole, and I like the way that he's lengthening his stride coming to the wire. You can see he's got this big floaty action on him, very indicative of a son of Candy Ryan, and he's going to stride away from this field to the wire. Gets a 100 time form US speed figure for this performance. And I think that's a pretty solid number for this runner because there were a couple of six and a half furlong maiden races on that car, two divisions of the same race. And this was the faster one. And we've seen some horses come back out of both this race and the other division and run faster speed figures in their subsequent starts. So I feel like those were decent maiden races on December 31st. The one knock that I do have against Wharton is that he got a good trip over a track that, as you see in that pink color coded race rating box, was favoring horses that were racing near the front end, and Wharton did get that kind of trip. He figures to be forwardly placed once again, especially on the stretch out, going all the way from six and a half furlongs out to the mile and the 16th distance. As far as stamina goes, his damn her smile was more of a sprint type, though this horse, Wharton, is a half-brother to Pink Sands, a horse that could go as far as a mile, I believe was a graded stakes winner going a mile, but was really more of a seven furlong to a mile, one turn type of horse. So we'll see if Wharton can handle the stretch out in distance. I've watched some of the more training of both these Bob Baffert runners, Messier and Wharton. I feel like Messier is training a little bit better coming into this race. They haven't worked together, uh, but Messier has worked against some good horses in the morning and has held his own. Wharton uh, worked recently against the older Bob Baffert runner, Triple Tap, and looked decidedly second best to that horse in the workout, having, be, having to be scrubbed along a little bit to stay with that one in the morning. So we'll see if he can take a step forward from that debut victory. Another horse coming off a maiden win is the number two, Sir London, and he broke his maiden last time out at Los Alamitos. Let's take a look at that race that he won going the two-turn mile, and he is a visually impressive winner this day, coming into the stretch with a big lead, and he is just going to widen as they come to the wire, eventually crossing the finish line, 10 lengths ahead of the rest of his foes. Now, he had run well in both of his prior two starts sprinting. This was his first time stretching out, and he clearly handled the added ground without any issue. That said, he was not facing much this day. There really wasn't anything of quality behind him. Uh, so the margin of victory, I think, really a function of just the field that he was facing. His trainer, Simon Callahan, has just mediocre numbers with horses coming off maiden victories on the dirt. Uh, six for 30 over the past five years with a 130, 120 ROI. So these horses are not really winning at a high rate going off at relatively short prices. Sir London, I feel like he's another one that could be forwardly placed coming off that speed, uh, that uh, Maiden victory where he did show speed. I think he'll be showing speed in this race inside of Wharton. So we'll see how the pace shakes out in this small field. He's run some nice speed figures. Others like Messier have run a little bit faster, but I do think that Sir London has upside. There's stamina on the bottom side of his pedigree. He's the son of Malibu Moon. He's been training well coming into this race, and I think he is a horse that does have a right to take a step forward. But the horse that I find pretty interesting or most interesting coming out of a maiden victory is the number five, Happy Jack. Let's take a look at him winning his maiden race just 15 days ago at Santa Anita on January 22nd. Now, he's coming into the stretch in about fifth place uh, in mid-pack on the inside. He's going to angle down towards the rail. Looks like he's spinning his wheels for a little bit as they come around the far turn to the quarter pole, but once he finds daylight here at mid-stretch, he's going to really lengthen his stride and quicken his action and finish off this race pretty strongly to get up to win. Now, he did get a fast pace to close in, so that definitely helped his closing run, but I liked the way that he was gaining momentum crossing the wire and if you watch the gallop out of this race he really gallops out strongly well ahead of the rest of the field so to me that's a positive sign for him stretching out in distance and he is a horse that is certainly bred to go longer being by oxbow a sire whose progeny typically have no problem going route distances the dam sire is tap it there's plenty more dam, dam side stamina breeding if you look through that female family so i do think happy jack is not going to struggle stretching out in distance there are some negative signs with his trainer doug O'Neill. Neil. This is not a barn that does well with horses coming off maiden bit wins or with uh, last out debut victors. Also stretching out in distance, not really the forte for trainer Doug O'Neill. That said, 
I like what this horse did in his debut, the professionalism he showed. And I've watched some of his morning training coming into that debut. He really hasn't done much working out in the morning since that race, since it was just 15 days ago. But his training coming into that race, it felt like they really weren't asking him for his best in the morning. But he would always gallop out really strongly in his workouts, even when he was the, the inferior workmate in company with some tougher Doug O'Neill trainees. He would be the one that would gallop out strongly. And to me, that's indicative of a horse that does want more ground. So I do think that Happy Jack is going to relish the stretch out to a mile on the 16th. And as we throw my picks for this race, I put Happy Jack on top because I do think he's going to be the biggest price of those four contenders that I just talked about. It's a little hard to make a case for the other runner that I didn't mention, the number three Cabo Spirit, who's switching to dirt after a series of turf races. But I do think this race will be decided by the four runners that I did mention. And like I said, I think Happy Jack is going to be the biggest price of those. So I put him on top. Uh, I do respect the form of Messier, but I'm just a little bit concerned about that blinker move for Bob Baffert. And these Bob Baffert runners typically take so much money in these derby preps at Santa Anita. So I wanted to sort of veer away from them. I also think the number two, Sir London, somewhat interesting, but at a bigger price, uh, which I'm anticipating, I wanted to take that Doug O'Neill trainee, the number five Happy Jack for me in the grade three Robert B. Lewis on Saturday, on Sunday, I should say, at Santa Anita. Thanks to Gainsway for presenting this derby prep coverage this weekend. And good luck if you're playing this weekend.